it's a new week. Let's let's get to it, right? We have all this energy. We've we've stayed in touch on Discord. Lots of good stuff happening there. And I figured too, this week let's try something a little bit different. You'll notice in the uh, stream description below for the the entry because I, I do try and keep my feed up to date. This week we're gonna try th uh, the character sheet that I previewed uh, the prior. This one is a little bit different in rearrangement, and it's meant to put a lot of really, uh, really, to rearrange things to be more efficient. The link for where this is is down below. Uh, I'll share it in here real quick, too. I'll share it in chat. There we go. Oh, a Canadian trapper hat? You mean like a um, like one of the coonskin hats, right? It, it's sort of like a it, it's it's sort of like a cylinder, and then it has the tail kind of hanging off. Or are you talking about a toboggan hat with the, like the little like flaps over the ears? Or even a, a deer stalker hat, which is kind of like the Sherlock Holmes hat. It's like kind of a kind of a dome, or like or like a, a a bullet point, and then it has the flaps on the front and the back, you know, that fold up. Uh, anyway, this is so. This is the preview of how things are different and where we're going to be rearranged. I'm, I'm off screen, like you can see my hand here. Um, the second one. Ah, uh, okay. I, I only have a very limited. Uh, then adjust and think. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is my workspace here until I find uh, another way to do things. Plus, the perspective gets really weird because the way the camera's set up. Oh, I have giant hands. Fear me. <laughs> you know, talk about casting polymorph or something. <laughs> oh, I'm in a good mood. <laughs> Lots of energy, lots of good things. I think we're going to have an amazing week. Uh, I've been able to do a lot of stuff on the back end to get all the prior campaigns that, that we've made, all the prior stories um, together uh, to get them uh, more organized. And throughout the week, I want to fill in all the PDFs and try and bind the characters together and then make them as a kind of offering. You're hoping today's character is a member of the uh, Zentalar? Well, uh... I don't see why we couldn't apply that as some kind of a, I don't know, as a filter or whatnot. In, intrinsically, there's nothing that would say that they are or aren't. <laughs> or wait, are, 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 you, are you talking about the, the Zentarim that you are talking about before? Or are you referring to something else as a Zentalar? Uh, anyway, so this is the, this is the cheat sheet reference. You can see some things are moved around. There's actually a place for your worn gear. Here's all the different slots. Um, and, uh, and and we'll move forward. Oh, okay. They're the military arm of the Zentrum. Got it. Uh, now, you will see, too, these magic words down here. Encumbered. Carrying capacity. We're not going to worry about those right now. If you look at the weekly schedule, there's going to be a PC advice section. And we are going to get into details like that, about what is carrying capacity. How do you jump in D&D? How do you determine how far you can jump? Uh, what are some other things you can do in combat other than cast a spell or swing a sword? We're going to go over a bunch of that stuff. Um, and, and bring an, a level of detail to the characters that we haven't really touched on so far. And that we can incorporate into our... Uh, that we can incorporate into the characters from here on out. But they're usually nothing that's considered up front, as we've just given them basic packages of things. Babacus says the finest soldiers on the continent will be found mostly protecting caravans from the wild north. Now, of course, you're not just saying that, Babacus, because you're biased, right? <laughs> uh, okay, we have our... Here we go. Our random roll guide. And here's a form fillable sheet. That is pretty well ready to go. I didn't preload it with the uh, the stats and things like you've seen for the basic sheet. <laughs> for the right pay, of course. Yeah, I would never. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we need to determine the gender of this character and whether or not he or she will be a multi-class character. We're going to do that by rolling a set of percentiles. 24. This is going to be female. Next up, we have our race and sub-race. That's a d10, re-roll a 10, and then odds or evens for sub-race 1 or 2. This is going to be an elf, and which kind of elf? A wood elf. There we go. Interesting start. Next up, we have alignment. This is going to be 2D percentiles for each of the axes of the alignment chart. <laughs> right, we have, uh, we have good, neutral, evil, and we have lawful, neutral, chaos. I guess I could have done it along the other line, but you get what I'm saying. Let's roll it. 4739. It's going to put us into neutral territory and... 39, it's going to be a lawful neutral character. There we go. Next up, we have the level. The level of the character is based on a, on a, um, a probability curve, a, a spread, so we need a percentile roll. 95, ooh, we're starting off with a nice high level character. Look at this, ooh, juicy, juicy 17. We're going to get four ASIs or ability score increments with this character. Now let's see how many of those are going to actually be replaced by feats. Um, and while uh, Bubonic did make this uh, chart based on the one that I was using before, um, this is something that I would go back and re-tier out and not just have it be uh, stat gains or feats in general, but how many. Anyway, let's even see if it's relevant. Let's roll a percentile. 32. Nope. So we're going all ability score increases. Okay. We're going to roll a 13 sided die for the background. Change this to a 13 here. Hit roll. A 2. This is a charlatan. Interesting. <laughs> And of the charlatan, there are D6 origins, or six different kinds of... Uh, six different ways to be a charlatan. Although, let me double check, because this, this needed a tweak on something. I'm already in the background section. Okay, th this one was six. One of them was off by... Uh, it was a D6, and it should have been a D8. Uh, so our scam is going to be number two. I shave coins or forge documents. Okay. Oh, you know what? This should be 17. Whoops. I'm still using the old uh, the old sheet. I'm just going to put that up there because, hey, we can do either one and we'll see which one is, uh, is better for her. Hey, Ro, welcome. It's good to see you. I mean, on the channel, I know that we've been talking over the break on in Discord and such. So level 17, we might expect this Zentalar to be an R-Dragon, or a high-level sorcerer under a Bane Fist. Oh, you're, you're starting to get into uh, terminology that I'm not too familiar with, uh, Bobacus. You'll need to translate that for the others, because <laughs> I can't. Or they're not a Zentalar at all, they're Zentarim with that charlatan background. Hmm, that could be... Now, you'll see that one of the differences between the traditional sheet and this modified one we're experimenting with is here we're on page two for these sorts of things. We're going to get two personality traits, which are going to be 2d8s, 4 and 1, and then we're going to get 3d6, as usual for the other parts of her background, 5, 3, 4. go
Oh, that's a, a little bit misaligned. I that or it's supposed to be for... Uh, no, it's not even necessarily for... Uh, Well, we'll have to go with it. Our background feature is that of a false identity. You have created a second identity that includes documentation, established acquaintances, and disguises that all allow you to assume that persona. Additionally, you can forge documents, including official papers and personal letters, as long as you have seen an example of the kind of document or the handwriting you're trying to copy. <laughs> Pardon. All right, let's head back over here. This is all well and good, but what is she? Aside from a charlatan, what is her class? We're gonna roll a d12, this big golden button right here, and boom, she's an eight. Just like that, we've made a ranger. And being a ranger, she has two archetypes. All right, so she's two, right? So we're working here in Ranger. She's a Beastmaster. <laughs> then we get D4 for her style, for her fighting style. Four, two weapon fighting. Now, usually there's like a, a big attack area here. Um, though that's not necessarily the case here. We can put this under class for right now. Two weapon fighting. And then she gets um, kind of a te uh, some territories that uh, she initially is very good at uh, stalking or ranging in. That's going to be a D8 to start, but I think she's going to get a couple more, especially by that level. One. And one is... Arctic. Ooh. This could be interesting. I'm going to put that here for right now. I mean, it's very difficult over 13 classes and all these options to know exactly, especially after a couple months of using the old one. But we're going to just put this here for a, a placeholder. Next, as we have a wood elf right here, we need to fill in... Ooh, wrong document. We need to fill in a couple different things. Oh, not... Well, eye, skin, and hair, yes, but age, height, and weight. We're going to start as uh, Wood Elves, begin at 4 foot 6. We're going to add 2d10 to her height. 13 inches. Ooh, all right. Uh, Bobica says they smell way more like Zentarim than Zentalar. The Zentalar often hire Orc or Knoll mercenary armies for some of their larger campaigns. She could be their negotiator. Oh, Arctic. Uh, what intelligent tribes live in the Arctic? Um, part, of the, part of that can depend on the uh, on the setting. Um, for instance, in Dragonlance, I want to say that there's actually a race of, for lack of a better term, they're walrus people. Uh, I forget the name of the race, um, but they are but they are, you know, if you're looking for sort of like beast man races. Otherwise, you know, a lot of the intelligent races or like the the more humanoid races, not the monstrous ones. Um, they live in the, you know, in the extremes of the, the north or south and are exposed to the cold. You know, just think of uh, any other mammals or birds or anything. So you, you might not find, uh, you might not find uh, lizard folk living there, but, you know, you could, you could probably find others. 
Uh, buoy. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So we're adding 13 inches to four foot six. So she is going to be five foot seven inches. Five foot seven inches tall. We're gonna take this same 13 and we are going to multiply it by 1d4. Three. All right, so we're gonna add 39 pounds. So she's 139 lubs. Age, we're going to determine on a probability curve. 19. So that's not how old she is, but she does fall under young adult. So this is this is what we've determined. Let's type in young adult. Here we have elves, right? And two was young adult, so now let's cross-reference. Bink. Here we go. Between 100 and 200 years old. And we're going to roll a D100 and see where we go from there. 72. She is a young adult at 172 years old. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, right? By the way, yeah, spellcasting uh, does look a little different. Don't let all of this make your eyes go wobbly. Cool. We have all this info. So now we can start filling in the juicy bits. Uh, we will want to figure out some kind of a false identity for her. And we can put the... We'll put question marks here. Lavica says she was a wood elf living in the taiga who had a fondness for dealing with the frost giant tribes. Oh, yeah, yeah, there are frost giants. Uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, that could explain... Um, that could explain... Her more natural, like her rangery background. Um, I, I was even thinking, if you're lawful neutral and you're a ranger, even if you're a beastmaster, that could have you be some kind of a private detective, right? You're neutral, like because private detectives aren't the official guard. These are people who are just for hire, and they'll, you know, find evidence uh, for civil matters, or you know, they'll go and investigate things on the side in a in a private. Uh, you know, on a contractual basis. So they're neutral in those terms because maybe they'll take a job from someone who doesn't have the best reputation, but they have the coin, and what they're asking for isn't illegal. Um, or because we're starting her in an Arctic environment, whether or not she ends up there, because her proficiencies are going to tell the tale about where she began. Think about it this way, right? She's getting mechanical benefits, but this first one she must have grown up in some kind of an arctic environment and it, even if it's not arctic it could just be mountaintops right because it, it's cold uh you have to put up with a lot of winds and extreme temperatures and exposure to the sun and all that um so it, it could be um it could be something there because I, I do believe there's there might be a mountainous um let me just double check. There are mountains, so maybe it, it, that would bleed a little bit on there. Unless we're talking about, like, she just lives in, you know, just in the, on, the, on the tops. That's, she, she was born, she trained there at the very tops of mountains, and then she worked into the base and the broader sections and, and uh, worked her way out from there. <laughs> that could be Bobacus. Now, I'm, I'm not going to apply any actual, like, Zentarim... Uh, if you want to, I'm not going to stop you because I enjoy seeing the parallel. Uh, like as you're as you're drawing these parallels to the character, um, but because the the intricacies of the Forgotten Realms just aren't part of my knowledge base or what I have accessible on screen, uh, I'll follow along with what you're saying. For and if uh, there are people who see this later on or are watching right now and want to say, "Oh, okay, so this character could be Zentrum and this is how." Please provide that that co-commentary. Um, I'm definitely not against that at all, but I'm just not going to have a lot to say on that because that's beyond my um, Forgotten Realms. That level of knowledge is beyond my comfort zone in addressing or applying a template to a character we're already randomly generating. 
Um, though you did mention also originally she would show up at human settlements, promising to be a guide, but would lead caravans in the ambushes she would set up for them. Still awful neutral because her loyalty is to the elves and the frost giants. Humans are just marks. Yeah, it, because, you know, we often try to, hey, Storm, uh, you know, we often say, well, if you're neutral, you're still doing good stuff, but neutral, she's maintaining her neutrality in that sense, right? It's like saying a half-elf. Well, if we say half-elf, then we're projecting that elves are not the norm. And instead, you know, for a character like this, or sort of what Bobicus is saying, she would be called a half-human. And in fact, it's more you. It's probably a lot easier to, to call people half humans if they're a half orc, arguably a tiefling, a half elf, maybe even a dragonborn, because that's the trait that they all share: is that they're all half humans. Um, so cultural things to think about, and I, I appreciate you putting that stuff out there, Bobicus. That can all be part of her backstory. Or at least the, the broader concepts. Again, when we get to the Zentrum, that's kind of entering into... Uh, mm, pardon me. Random hiccup. Uh, we kind of get into the weeds a little bit there, at least with my own resources. Uh, I, I said arguably Bobicus. Uh, I mean, it's, it's through... I guess that would depend on, on your world or the lore that you're applying to them. But it could very well be the distillation of draconic bloodline through intermixing with humans that bore dragonborn. Since they are more humanoid in form than than actually draconic. Oh, where was I? I'm sorry. Here we go. Charlatans. Whoop, we scrolled up a little bit. Her personality traits. I'm a born gambler who can't resist taking a risk for a potential payoff. And, number one, I fall in and out of love easily and am always pursuing someone. Yeah, a true hunter, right? <laughs> It's easy for Senpai to notice you when you've laid an ambush for him and you set, like, an ankle noose trap, right? And he walks through it and vroom, goes up and is just hanging by the string. By his foot. Ideal is five. Friendship. Material goods come and go. Bonds of friendship last forever. That is a more traditionally good aligned blurb. It's still easy to work into her lawful neutral ness. <laughs> Bonds are three. Somewhere out there beneath the pale moonlight. Somewhere out there, I have a child who doesn't know me. Ooh, okay. Very interesting. I'm making the world better for him or her. So here, I'll put this in uh, brackets so we can decide. You know, is it only one child? Does she have several? Uh, are they hims or hers? There we go. Something to think about. Oftentimes, uh, I've run for... I have run for players who've had kids as a character and if you are a dm who's looking to rein in wild players and in their characters one way to do that would be to give them uh the responsibility of being a parent or mentor in some way whether it's uh adoptive fostering or a mentor in a in a scholarship sense or in a even a battle sense um putting a yoke of responsibility on a character can often change the outcome of their decisions. I mean, just think about real life. I know that there are examples of that not happening, um, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Flaws, because we're all flawed creatures. Number four. 
I'm too greedy for my own good. I can't resist taking a risk if there's money involved. That especially plays into I'm a born gambler. Okay. Awesome progress. Come back up to... How did this person ever become lawful? Hey, you know what? Uh, she's Maybe she's doing the best she can right now. Uh, even as you indicated, Babaka, she, she might have had a very wild... Um, she might have had a, she's only a young adult by elven standards. Um, and if she's been, if she grew up in an area that is outside of, um, that is outside of the normal channels, the normal, um, no, how, how do I don't want to put this? Well, anyway, so she's still making, she was making dumb mistakes and something has happened that has helped her to now align, and maybe it's this, I have children, I have a child that uh, doesn't know me, and I want to make the world a better place. Now she has to start conforming to the laws of the land, or to the laws of nature, or whatever we're trying to set her moral compass. And the, the, the snapshot of her character right now at creation is during this uh, moral transition. <laughs> So yeah, you know, th this is an internal battle. Uh, she She's had this, uh, she has had this uh, chaotic past. She's had uh, trysts and, uh, and that has apparently resulted in a child or several. And now something has happened that has snapped her into responsibility mode. And that's the roleplay challenge is as a, it, so if we're a DM for this character, we can put these fun little lures in front of the, the player and watch how they role play through the situation of wanting to pursue this very handsome elf that uh that she comes across um or i mean obviously uh you know there, there was a a male elf involved but if if her heart is really on her sleeve maybe she pursues anyone she finds beautiful um it doesn't even have to be an elf per se um you know speaking of having a half human <laughs> Maybe she has a half-human child. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think this kind of duality is, uh, could be uh, could make for a very compelling character with lots of room to grow. Roll a d4 for children. Um, mm, I don't know. A, a d4. I I. I will keep that in mind, Dark Wolf. I think we need to develop her a little bit more right now as she is in this. We need to develop her photo, right? We'll take a look at her photo and see... Um, see where that goes. Because it's... Look, we're, we're all humanoids here. At least I hope so. I mean, I, I don't know. You have a webcam on me, and as far as you know, I'm a humanoid. I, I don't have a webcam on you. I don't know. You could be some weird uh, storm squid monster. <laughs> Um, you know, it is possible to have an oopsie, and a child is, is made from an oopsie. Though to have up to four oopsie daisies, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, actually, I'm an aberration. <laughs> I, I wish I had uh, my glasses that I could, you know, push up and actually... <laughs> Oh, good stuff. All right, let's come back up here. We have a... Uh, da -da -da -da, collapse that. Come over to races. An elf. Okay. Elves get stuff. And in particular, they do get some ability score increases. We're going to store those down here. They're going to start with two decks. They are going to get... 30 feet of movement. And where was this? So this is... These are other types of movement here. Swimming, running, climbing, and fly. So we have a run speed of 30. 
we do get dark vision. You see this little eye up here? We have dark vision of 60 feet. We do get perception as a part of being an elf. So here we go. So you see how there's a little radio button? Now, if she were to get expertise as a bard or a rogue, there's even a little, a wee little circle off here. You see where the, you see the boxes? And we could click that showing that, whoop, that we could get double proficiency. Now, as a ranger, I don't believe she's going to get that. But, boom. She does get... Fae... Ancestry. Uh, which is going to give her advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. Uh, and actually, we might even be able to do something. We can uh, put that up here for... Advantages. Versus charmed. And for immunities... See, they have different damage types, but they don't have something like sleep or uh, other types of magics. So, yeah, we, we can keep... Uh, we can keep uh, Fey Ancestry as a... Sort of as a, whatever, a, a placeholder. We do also get to trance. We hit up the Electronic Music Dance Club. We get into a nice trance mode. Languages are their own thing up here. We do get common. And we get elven. Maybe I should still use a comma in this case. Looks like the boxes are kind of in an odd spot. And we might... Uh, I don't know if we're going to really get any more. We'll see. Then we come over to... Wood Elf. Bing, ba -da ding We bring our Wisdom. That's where we get our bonus. We do get Elf Weapon Training. Long Sword, Short Sword. Okay. Our proficiencies. Here we go. Weapons. I don't know. As a Ranger, this might not necessarily... Might not necessarily matter. There we go. Fleet of foot. A hey, 35 feet. Mask of the wild. We can hide uh, when things are obscured. Oh, actually, actually, <laughs> we did need to pull one other, a couple other things off of the background. I'm getting a little chatty and uh, getting ahead of myself. Man, I have all this energy. I'm like, yeah, new new campaign week. Had some time off. I'm ready to talk D&D &D with you all. Our charlatan background is going to give us a couple more things. Uh, we are going to get training in deception and sleight of hand. You'll also notice here that the skills are underneath their associated uh, their associated ability score. Tools, we will get a these guys kit. And uh, where was I? Here we go. Forgery kit. Can can you all see this uh, on your ends? Is this big enough? So uh, w the font's a little smaller than it is on the traditional sheet. But can you still read the uh, this this small area where it talks about longsword and bow or the disguise kit and forgery kit? Things like this, I hope, are also big enough for you to be able to read. But if this is too small for being useful in broadcasting, um, I don't mind translating everything over into these sheets to display later. But I really want to make sure that this is coming up as uh, readable for you all. Mm. 
Okay. We are going to get fine clothes. A disguise kit. Tools of the con of our choice. Ten stoppered bottles filled with colored liquid, a set of weighted dice, a deck of marked cards, or a signet ring of an imaginary duke. Uh, so that's going to... Our con here was either we're a coin shaver, and uh, and so what that means is um, we'll, we'll use this charging pad. Let's say this is, a, this is a gold coin. So what we do is if we have ten gold coins and we shave the edges and we take a tenth of the weight off of ten gold coins we could theoretically make an eleventh gold coin and that one would be whole so we're, we're, we're used to trying to like we're, we're cutting corners even though we're talking about round things um, so you have it's, it's, that coin shavers could also be maybe we do counterfeiting right especially if the other option is forgery and forgery doesn't have to just be legal documents or contracts. We could say that she is a counterfeiter of money. She's a coin shaver directly, or she's a forger of some kind. And we'll want to, uh, and, and so this might mean a, um, maybe something like a forgery kit. But this is um, con supplies. And we'll put it in brackets with a question mark so we know to come back to that and a belt pouch with 15 gold in it platinum gold electrum which isn't used too often but it's interesting that they do account for it silver and copper bink there we go all right now fast forward and whoo there we go there's our all, all our elven stuff <laughs> now let's get to her uh, her class Hey, look at that. She's a ranger. All right, Peru. I'm, thank you for letting me know. On top of that, she is a level 17 ranger, which means we're looking at all of this here stuff. Hmm. <laughs> She's going to get D10 per ranger level. D10, and she's going to get 17 of them, and so far she has used zero of them. And over here, if you decide to multi-class, let's say, I don't know, she splashed in wizard, you could put D6s, and let's say she went 14 ranger and 3 wizard, you'd have 14 D10s and 3 D6s. Does that make sense? Hopefully. <laughs> if not, you can, you, can, uh, you can stop me. She has a, that fake identity too, so forgery would work. Yeah, uh, th though she kind of gets that either way. Uh, so if she, let's say that she was um, she was a counterfeiter, her fake identity could be as someone from an, uh, an official treasury, and so she'd still get a fake identity related to the con of her choice. Um, if she was a coin shaver, then she could still she could pass herself off as a goldsmith or a money changer, like an official one, something along those lines. Yeah, <laughs> carrot snake, carrot snake, carrot. <laughs> I uh, I do have that saved, and actually, uh, Dark Wolf, I was going to talk to you about a couple things regarding that, uh, but not not during the stream. Uh, what else is she getting here? Oh, we have armor. She's getting light, medium armor. And shield uh, proficiency. There's that. And then she does get simple weapons and martial weapons. So in this case, her being a wood elf, especially the longsword and longbow, doesn't really matter. And her ranger skills are going to supersede that. Boom. There we go. No tool proficiencies for being a ranger. Her saving throws are strength and dexterity. So we come up here. You see this little diamond? That is showing she's proficient in in strength saving throws, and now she's proficient in dexterity saving throws. Hey, thank you, Dark Wolf. Yes, Storm, you are still the boss, though you are losing life. Looks like you're about down to half, and uh, and so remember, uh, bits will knock you down, 
Um, I, I don't know if the hosts knock you down, but the hosts do give you uh, experience points. So if you were to host the channel, you would get a bonus EXP. Um, though, um, uh, let's see. Subscriptions, bit donations, and uh, follows. All will knock your health down, Storm. Uh, so what if Santa uh, Karale was a real guide and her con was just to pretend to be her? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, going back a step, Bob, because fake identity is Santa Karale, the half-elf guide who would lead caravans to frost giant ambushes. Is uh, So Sana is... Uh, is this a Forgotten Realms character, or are, are you just like? Is this just a name that you're that you're like you're producing her fake identity? Okay, I, I wasn't sure. I, I'm not asking to try and undermine you or not believe you, Bobicus, but I know that we were talking really heavily about the Z, uh, the Zentarim, and is that a character in the Zentarim? that she's pretending to be, and I, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page there. So thank you for letting me know. <laughs> oh, she's going to get three from Animal Handling, Athletics, Insight, Investigation, Nature, Perception, Stealth, and Survival. Ooh. Um... We could make the argument for animal handling because she's a beast master. At the same time, she already has her animal, and they already have an intrinsic bond. I don't know if she's really interested in trying to bond with other animals or understand them. All these character creations make me want to make a new character and play a game. Th that's partially the point. I want to make sure that we're, we're being inspirational, Storm. I want you to, to think creatively, think outside the box, challenge yourself, uh, look at things that maybe you've never thought of before. And this character is a really good and challenging one, right? She comes from this very chaotic background. She's she is a young adult at 172, but she's definitely um, she's been through stuff, and she's maybe trying to reform uh, as well. Her as as Bobicus is putting out, and any any of you can also add input into her and her background or things along those lines. But as Bobicus is is conceptualizing her. She, she's not going from the ethnocentric human perspective. You know, she doesn't feel an attachment to the humans. Right? She, they're, they're an intelligent race, but she has these bonds other, like outside of uh, human settlement and establishment. And so she doesn't necessarily... She, she's working within this other set of laws and cultural norms instead of necessarily just saying, oh yeah, you're a human and I'm going to protect you because you're a snowflake. I should know, I live in an Arctic zone. <laughs> or at least I grew up there. Though she's going to get a couple other zones to get expertise, and we'll be able to tell her story by the places she's been in regards to this. Uh, okay, where else are we? We were looking at uh, at this stuff down here. Animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature. She's probably want to go athletics because strength is going to be... It'll be her strong point, right? She's a two-weapon fighter. She's going to be that melee, all-up-in-your-face kind of ranger. So at least tentatively, one of the three, let's put there. <clears throat> Pardon. Perception seems to work. If we're going with this, you know, with her growing up in the wilds, in the Arctic, being able to lead people uh, through uh, through nature itself. Uh, I don't know how stealthy she'd necessarily have to be, uh, but something like perception or... Hmm. What if we went... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, she already has perception for being an elf. Derp. <laughs> Maybe insight, then? So that if she was intending on leading caravans astray or something along those lines, she'd need to be able to read the attitude and the capabilities of the people that she was supposedly leading as a guide. That might make sense. 
I'll put it in. I'll put the, the mark in here. But if any of you out there are thinking differently, you have a different concept for the character, speak up. There's not a right or wrong answer. This is, you know, as Bob Ross says, you know, that there's no mistakes, only happy accidents. And if you think that something should be corrected or you have a very compelling reason otherwise, speak up. I'm not 100% right in here. This isn't my character. This is our character that we're building together. And let's give her... Survival. Survival seems to be kind of jumping out at me here. She's going to start with some equipment in addition to that granted by her background. Scale mail or leather armor. She will be strong enough to wear the scale mail. And this sheet... Dun -dun -dun -dun, look at this. Scale mail. Two short swords or two simple melee weapons. Short sword. And we'll just put X2. A Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. A longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows. And I want to say there's an ammo slot somewhere in here. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, weapon. Spell slots. Mm, maybe not. Quiver. Arrows X20. Yeah, we could make a, a dex based two weapon fighter. Uh, Bobacus. You know, if, if she's fighting with finesse weapons like a short sword and a dagger, she could do something along those lines. All these character creations may... Oh, I'm sorry, I already read that storm. You know, if we did that, then we'd probably replace her scale mail with uh, leather armor. Go that route. But I don't know. Do we want a strong ranger? Like a strong in-your-face, you know, ranger? Or do we want a, uh, a dexterous one? Either way, I, we're making we're still making a compelling character. Hmm, let's see. At 6th and 14th level, she's going to get... Favorite enemy. One, two, three. Meaning that she's going to get three other languages. Boom. And we'll need to decide as she takes this journey which enemies is she's going to take. There are aberrations, uh, a.k.a. Bobacuses, <laughs> beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fae, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or the undead. <laughs> Alternatively, you can select two races of humanoid, such as gnolls and orcs, as a favorite enemy. So that's, do we want monster types or humanoid types? And if we go humanoid, then it would be, uh, so let's say that she goes uh, humanoids, orcs, gnolls. And she'd get one language from there if I'm reading this correctly here. Um, yeah, one language of your choice that is spoken by your favorite enemies, if they speak one at all. Now, that said, let's say that she goes, uh, let's say that she goes orc and gnolls, and then she choo uh, she chooses oozes, haha, <laughs> right? Oozes don't speak a language themselves, but kind of from how this is interpreted... Um, because you're getting one choice from the favored enemies you have, we could then say you can speak Orcish, and I think Gnolls speak Infernal. If, if they don't speak Infernal, they speak, um, they speak Abyssal, because they, they tend to be more demon worshippers than devil worshippers. 
And so you could take those as languages, and you're still meeting the qualifications. Two favorite enemy slots, two languages, even though you're getting them both off of this one this one rider line here. Uh, and in this case, uh, Bobicus says, uh, or, you know, if Bobicus is saying, well, she's not necessarily been fond of humans. In fact, maybe that's the dalliance. Uh, maybe that's what set her straight, is uh, she actually had a tryst with a human and has born a half-human child or children. I, I'm, I'm open if, if uh, we want her to um, have more than one, but uh, she should have at least one. And uh, this is then her... She spent her wild youth not hunting humans, but not helping them to kind of giving in, right? She, she sees them as an adversary, and so maybe she thought it was taboo or a thrill or just kind of a, uh, you know, her kink in order to, you know, try and allure uh, a human that was in one of these caravans that she was leading. And that ended up in, in Oopsie. And uh, since then, maybe she's been trying to... She wants to make the world a better place for her child. Her child is half human, so maybe this has led her into the Mesomasca region because she started in this Arctic region and she's probably moved from there. But I will leave these open for right now. We have the fighting style, and that was two-weapon fighting. When you engage in two-weapon fighting, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack. Uh, she will get spells. We're not going to worry about that offhand. Uh, like that, that'll be one of the last things that we do. Um, natural Explorer... And this is where we can put uh, Arctic. Uh, you're particularly familiar with one type of natural environment and are adept at traveling and surviving in such regions. Choose one type of favorite terrain, Arctic, coast, etc. When you uh, make an intelligence check, okay, so there's the mechanics for it. I'll go over it specifically if any of you out there need me to. Otherwise, I'm just getting a sense so that we can continue to develop her character and tell her life story through her character sheet. You choose an additional favorite terrain type at 6th and 10th. So she's going to get uh, three types of Natural Explorer. Arctic was her first. And now we can tell the tale of where she's been by where else she's proficient. She gets Arctic, Coast, Desert, Forest, Grassland, Mountain, Swamp, or the Underdark. Now, keep in mind that we're building a character that will end up in the Mesomasca region. Um, I can see... I can see any of these terrain types existing here. Uh, so it's going to be... Remember, there is a great desert, there are great open plains, there are forests, there are mountains. Uh, Arctic is arguably the, the toughest one, but we can still do that really easily. Underdark, there's plenty of cave systems in the mountains, uh, you know, especially like old lava tubes and things like that. Underdark doesn't have to be underdark infested with drow. It can. Uh, that's a very literal interpretation. It could also just be, unlike mountains, you're used to going spelunking. You are an explorer, an underground explorer. Yeah, we, we can roll for it, Bobicus. That, that's true. I think we've rolled for it in the past. Um, and you know what? That's... you are You are correct. We're gonna we're gonna let this ride. We're gonna re-roll ones if we get any. Two D eight, let's hit it. Seven and four. Okay. Look in here. We have swamp, and the last one for her to take is forest. So it looks like just based off our first character, we're going to be going into Region One in uh, Region One in uh, Mesotopia, which I think we named uh, was it Kalos, like K H A L O S, because that has forest and it has a swamp in it.
Bingo. There we go. All right, there's our fighting style. We got through spell casting, and we're going to get our archetype. We are going to get primeval awareness as well as part of our class. Uh, that allows us to sort of extend our feelings, and s it's like an enemy radar kind of a thing. We will get ASIs, we will get an extra attack. Land stride. So your 8th level, moving through non-magical difficult terrain, costs you no extra movement. You can also pass through non-magical plants without being slowed by them and without taking damage if they have thorns, spines, or similar hazards. We can also hide in plain sight, which is going to take our natural wood elf ability and ramp it up a little bit. Yeah, it, it, Kandor might have been it. I, I was something along those lines, Dark Wolf. Um, bum, 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 bum. Knowles worship the demon lord y uh, Yinogu. Hence, the, yeah, hence why they can speak Abyssal. Yep. Yeah, I think it was Kandor, Dark Wolf. Heading back to the forest sort of suggests a return to roots uh, for a wood elf. Yeah, it could hint at that. Maybe she's actually. Uh, been out and about. Uh, maybe she had her child some, and her child is somewhere else in Mesotopia, and she's wanting to go back and maybe rediscover. You know, she's not the wild uh, caravan duper that she was anymore, right? She's she's more lawful neutral. She's she's kind of chilled in that <laughs> right Ar Arctic joke. Uh, she's kind of chilled out, and she's gone back into the northern areas, hugging one of the mountain ranges. That could very well be, uh, Bobacus. In fact, I can, uh, um, do I have that open here? Here's my D&D &D stuff. Here's our stories. We have this water temple. Mesotopia. So here's our, here's our swamp area. Now, there is a swamp area down here, too. And there's nothing saying that she couldn't be from, uh, this is region 1, 2, 3. Here's region 4. So we have region 1, region 4, both have mountains, both have forests, especially. There's a, a lot. Now, this is more jungle than forest, but I don't know if jungle was necessarily an option. I can go back and check. Uh, let me see. No, but it can count as, uh, it can count as a forest. Um, now, where's Mesotopia on the grand scheme of a globe? I don't know. Not all Arctic places are north. Arctic is in the south too, so it could very well be that uh, you know this is this is kind of the edge of uh, of uh, you know a, a, a temperate area, and it goes down, and it suddenly gets uh, very cold. Or again, mountains can just be like the mountain areas and the hills surrounding them, but the very tippy tops of mountains where it is actually bitterly cold, we could we could uh, flavor it that way too. Uh, you just finished out of the oh, oh out of the abyss module a few weeks ago. So yeah, you have a uh, a particular uh, particular knowledge of uh, things like that, don't you, Storm? Oh yeah, training area, lots of monsters to try and fight um, off of. Uh, <gasps> pardon, more so in the swamp. Swamp suggests dark period. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I was catching up in reverse. <laughs> Okay, hibbity jibbity. We're making good progress. And 14th level, she can just plain old vanish. Starting 14th level, you can use the hide action as a bonus action on your turn. Also, you can't be tracked by non magical means unless you choose to leave a trail. She's just that good. In fact, maybe this indicates that she got in trouble somewhere. You know, we're talking, uh, you know, we're talking, uh, Bobacus is talking about a story as we're building her character, what has led her to learn these abilities along the way. If she can vanish like this, maybe she's hiding from someone. We, we might be able to work this into the campaign even. You never want to go back to the Underdark. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to go exclamation point random you dark storm? <laughs> Take a chance in there. And she's just shy, right? She's level 17. She's just shy of getting feral senses. Okay. Now, as a Beastmaster, 
she's going to get a couple tings. Ranger's Companion, which we will need to determine what that is. Beginning at 7th level, on any of your turns when your Beast Companion doesn't attack, you can use a bonus action to command the Beast to take the dash, disengage, dodge, or help action. <laughs> Bestial Fury. Starting at 11th level, your Beast Companion can make two attacks when you command it to use the attack action. And we can also share spells. When you cast a spell targeting yourself, you can also affect your Beast Companion with the spell if it is within 30 feet of you. Bink, there we go. Oh, you might not have, uh, yeah, you might not have the EXP to go down there just yet, Storm. Yeah, so you, you need to earn a little bit more before you can go into the Underdark. You can go into a tomb if you want. I think you have enough to go down into a, a random tomb. Definitely a random dungeon. Okay. Now we need to fill in a couple things here. We need especially ability scores. You know, she has zero attempts. Uh oh, Storm's taking me up on the offer, going into a random tomb. H hello? Deep inside this tomb, a ghost appears. Only a 14 or greater can defeat it. You attack with advantage, adding a plus three modifier. 11 and 15. Oh, Storm puts down the g -g 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 ghost. There you go. You did it. <laughs> yeah, he would have done it even with disadvantage. Storm is the Ghostbuster. Uh, let's see. We still have an inspiration point. Oh, that's nice. It puts a little star in there for us. Our proficiency bonus at 17 is a plus 6. There we go. Our starting scores. Remember, we have... 15, 14, 13, whoop, 12, 10, and 8. If we did a 15 in dex, really, uh, it, really in here, this is supposed to be, uh, this, the score is going to go up here, but to make it a little bit more presentable, let's, let's just do it here. Let's say a, a 15 in dex. Wisdom is important for her skills, right? She has three skills in wisdom and is her spell casting base. So that should be a 14. Um, she's probably not the brightest. She probably has some charisma. Maybe we do something like 13, 12, or we could even flip-flop this since deception is a skill of hers. It's the same starting bonus, but she's going to be closer to leveling charisma. And then we go 10, and then we go 8. Which means this is going to put her... Uh, before I actually put that in there, what do you all think of this as uh, her initial, her level one starting stats? <laughs> Who are you going to call? Uh, you, you call S.H.I.E.L.D.? <laughs> Aren't we all agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? This is a conference call, right? Bavikus is saying swap the 15 and 14. Why are you saying that? So we have a 16, uh, so we have a 16 in each. Basically. 14, 15. Shield will bow before the might of my order. <laughs> no, it's fine, Bobacus. 
Uh, so if we did it like this instead, right? 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. At level 1, that pops up to a 16. This pops up to a 16. That's going to get rid of this, right? Now, we have four ability score uh, ability score increases or ASIs that we can assign. And remember, each ASI is plus two to one ability or plus one to two abilities. <laughs> Storm says, Hail Hydra. It's going to be important to raise up her, uh, her dexterity uh, as, as high as we can get it, right? This is going to be both a defensive stat and an offensive stat for her. So if we put two of her ASIs in the decks, this is going to give her a 20 dex. Hey, Bubonic, welcome. <laughs> Dark Wolf, male Hydra. <laughs> um, so then the question becomes, do we want to work on something else? Uh, we have four more points we can put into stats. Do we want to bump up her charisma a little bit? Uh, do we want to... Do we want to bump up her wisdom and her spellcasting ability? Maybe put her at an 18. And then we can split her other one maybe into intelligence and charisma so that her charisma bumps up. And for her final one at level 19, she can finally get that one stat bump and in intelligence to go to zero. Hi, Peru. I don't. If I didn't say hi to you before, I think I did, Peru, because you've been commenting in here. But I'm sorry, I've been so talkative it's escaped me. And especially because you haven't drawn from the deck of many things tonight, and that's kind of your jam. So, Storm, or, uh, Storm the DK snub pulls off the mask, is actually Red Skull, and now has Shield's plans. <laughs> Frankly, I am not surprised. <laughs> two Wiz and two in con, says Bobicus. So we're, we would be bumping her. Uh, whoop! We'd be bumping her uh, her spell casting up a, a wee little bit. And her con, she's actually getting bonus uh, HP now. Actually, let's see if I can get lucky enough here to uh, to roleplay into this with a who goes there. And let's see if it'll actually pick up Storm. Oh, I put 18 in con, sorry. Oh, no, I, I got excited, but it was actually stream elements. There we go. All right. That takes care of her ASIs. Uh, now we can... Yeah, the bottom is for an item bonus. Top is ability score. Let's move these over. 12, 20, 10, 8, 4... And one. Whoops. <laughs> Eighteen. <laughs> I was crossing them over. Getting used to this uh, to this uh, sheet we're gonna try playing with. There we go. This is going to put the saving throw at 7, and athletics at 7. 11, 11, 5, and 5. You can see how this is making, uh, this is how it's, uh, it's making the skill section a little bit more elegant. Minus 1, and we're just going to, uh... Control C and uh, Control V this all the way down. <clears throat> there we go. One. Let's see, that's a six, so that's going to be seven. One, one, and one. There we go. 
Con should be a 12. Oh, yep, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yep. Thank you, Bobicus. Thank you, Storm. This is going to give her some current hit points. Uh, let's see, she gets 10 at first level. And then we're going to add in plus 16 times 6 because she has the 16 other levels at half plus 1. And then because we increased her con to 12, this is going to give her a plus 1 modifier, which means she's going to get another 17 hit points from just increasing her constitution alone. So this is going to be 92, unless I'm doing mental math incorrectly. Or no, I'm sorry, 96. 6 times 6 is 36, so you put the 6 down, carry the 3. Whoop. There we go. So we have 106 plus the 17. That's going to be 113, 123. There we go. Her initiative is going to be plus 5. Her armor class, wearing leather armor, is going to be 11 plus her dex mod. So she's going to be at 16. And she doesn't currently have a shield. Uh, if she did, we could hit that, right? And then we would know that we're including a shield bonus because of that diamond. Bink, 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 bink. Passive perception is going to be 20. She has her inspiration point. We can clear this out here. Boom. Uh, no buffs, debuffs, and conditions right now. There are no damage immunities, right? IRV, immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities. Though, let's say that she was a tiefling. We could, we could hit that dot right there to show that she is resistant to fire. Or uh, if we had a... Um, we had a, uh, a white dragon... You're a, res uh, a white dragonborn. She's resistant to cold. Right? So there's immune, resistant, vulnerable. Bink. There we go. What else? She's going to need a name. Um, an official one. Bobicus has created a, a false identity. And uh, I'm sorry, Bobicus. Can you copy and paste that again? Um, I, I got a little caught up and I didn't... Uh, I didn't put that in the question marks here about what, uh... About what her... What her name... Was. Oh, that's right. There we go. Santa Caliena. Spells known at 14th level, we're going to get 8, and so we'll choose those. She's going to get 4 total first levels, 3-3-2. Three, three, now you can see this right up here, total, it, right, bink, you can see where I'm highlighting, it says total along the side, used. So that way, if you use one of your spells, you can say, oh, I've used the third level spell. You can fill it in one or two or three, and you can compare the two to see how many slots you have left. Any points like key, uh, like their key pool, sorcerer points, lay on hands can go here for total and used as well. As a ranger, you don't really have that. Uh, you don't have to worry about managing a side um, resource pool for spells. So really, we're just worried about the DC and the attack. 
This is going to be 8 plus proficiency plus wisdom. So 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 6 is 18. So her difficulty class to overcome her spell effects is 18. And her attack is her proficiency plus her wisdom bonus. This is going to be a plus 10. If we're going short swords, mm, hibbity jibbity, 5 plus... Is going to be a plus 11 to attack. Same with a longbow. One d6 plus five. I think longbows are d d8s or d10s. It might be one d10 plus five. And you can see here, there's a little radio box or little radio buttons. Are they slashing, piercing, or bludgeoning? So we have piercing short swords and piercing longbows. You can see the dots now a little better now that I don't have them highlighted. For her name, it should be super elvish, like uh, Selin. Selin uh, Breven? Sure. Or, uh, or Breven, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, she's not going to get any cantrips unless she decides to take um, a feat for her final ASI. And by the way, you see how I filled in the name down here too? Yay! Yay for, for good autofill. Okay, no cantrips. If we want to go to page three for reference, this was going to be four, three, three, and two. So remember, we're working on the 17th level here. At first level, we know two first level spells, right? Spells known two, first level two. So we have level one. At level two, we know three spells, and three are within uh, are in first. And also, at level four, we only know three spells. Which means at level uh, four, I'm uh, I'm sorry, yeah, that, that was two. Or, or I'm sorry, this is at level two. We learned these two. You don't start with it. At three, we get that four is the same. At level five, we know an additional spell that can be um, that can be in second and second level. Six is the same. Seven, we're still in second level. See how uh, seventh and eighth level, no new spells. There we go. Level 7, so at ninth level we'll get another one. So we have 9 and 11 are going to be here. You seeing the pattern? Twelve, so we still only know seven. But at 13 and 15, we do get fourth. Actually, we should get, uh, we do get a fifth level spell at, uh, not there. That should have been a one. Um, sorry, some things scrolling on the side. Uh, yeah, it is piercing. Uh, it's a sword. Realistically, it's any damage type, depending on how you hit people with it. That's true. You could bludgeon them with uh, with the hilt, couldn't you, King? Um, some dude wearing too much armor for your peasant murdering stick to slash and stab through? Turn it around and club him. Yep, with the handle. <laughs> Peru. Heresy. <laughs> Uh, bubonic, a kukri saber gladius, all examples of slash primary short swords. Would you consider a kukri to be a short sword, or is it really... I don't know, it's kind of weird, because it's, it's like a dagger, but it's like a long curved dagger. It's like a bladed... It's like a bladed boomerang on a, on a handle.
There we go. That's what we can do as a ranger. And remember, we don't have to worry about this because we don't have key points or sorcerer points or lay on hands. You can see here, too, if we get, a, let's say we get, a, I don't know, a scroll of cure wounds, you can put cure wounds and indicate with a radio button, is it a scroll, is it a wand, or is it an item of some kind that produces the effect? So it's good as you're leveling up. Uh, I guess I can't deselect the, uh, the button once it's pushed. She'll forever have a scroll of nothingness. <clears throat> and here, there are kind of little micro bubbles. It's a little bit difficult to see down in the blue. But if you look, you can even fill in. Do you have the spell uh, prepared? Is it a concentration spell? And does it have material, somatic, or verbal components? It's, an, it's a nice ease of access for you. And a little bit of that bleeds up into your cantrips, because these are sort of attacks. These are the things you can do on limited times, which is why they're by the, sh the swords and the bows. And you can also fill in these little radio buttons here. Damage, type, DC, save. And you go from there. If you bludgeon some of the sword, it becomes an improvised weapon and deals 1d4. But yes, you can absolutely do that. A lot of sword techniques are basically wrestling moves, but you also slam something into someone's face, says King. Long blade, swords, it's been proven that they use them any way they could, including like a staff. Yeah, but when... Yeah, there, there's historical accuracy, and then there's us trying to... Um, there's us just trying to uh, conceptualize things a little bit easier. But that is true. You could technically take a sword and use a bludgeoning, and it wouldn't—it won't deal as much damage. But there you go. All right. And by the way, I guess this, this, uh, talk about good coincidences. This is the first week we're going to try this other type of uh, sheet, and there's a fourth one for if you have an animal companion of some kind. And sure enough, we rolled up a we rolled up a Beastmaster Ranger, and so we can find some kind of animal to give her. And it'll have its own. We can take the stat block uh, from the monster manual and fill in this mini this mini sheet here. And as well, I mean, we can give her spells and whatnot. I'm not worried about doing that immediately because there's a couple other things that we need to be able to fill in for her character uh, before we look at her her uh, useful spells here. Uh, and King, uh, I don't know how long you've been around uh, watching. We do have a currently lawful neutral Wood Elf Ranger Beastmaster. She is a charlatan and it's uh, it says like a coin shaver or a forger. And this could also include something like uh, currency counterfeiting. The thought is uh, because her original uh, her original natural explorer area was Arctic, she grew up in some kind of an Arctic area, and she would guide caravans through the Arctic wastes, and in collusion with her, her wood elf tribe, which would be sort of xenophobic towards others traveling through it, and or in collusion with the, the frost giants that were conceptualizing live there, uh, she wasn't the best person in her youth, and uh, and so especially if they're like human caravans or things along those lines. And so unfortunately, some caravans might end up being in an accident, and she would always miraculously escape. You know, to find more work later. Uh, so she created this whole like I'm caravan leader Santa Caliena here. This is her false identity background. She has all the paperwork and everything. Um. <laughs> Lurk mode engaged, got it. Now, hey, do do your thing, King. Uh, and but, but for King or anyone else lurking out there, uh, this is the this is now kind of the the concept that's gelling around the the numbers we've generated. Um. 
And this has put her on a bit of a, a wild ride in her youth, and now she's a young adult. She's going into adulthood, right? That starts at 200. She's, I mean, as far as elven conceptualization goes. And she started to settle down because she does have a kid out there somewhere, and she wants to leave the world a better place for it. Probably, probably at least one child, probably a half-human. Doesn't have to be. I don't know. Could be something else. That's why I hand her a Claymar. Yeah, actually, I have... Um, uh, what I can do is, after we take our break, Bubonic, I actually have a Claymore and a Saber and a... Um, and a... a and a Gladius. And I can show those off. Hey, Fiendish, it's good to see you. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying the, the backstory. You can thank, uh, like, this has been a community effort. Bobacus has put out a lot of suggestions. And as you're following along, Fiendish, if you have any ideas too, put them out there. Because there's still some more th uh, details that we need to put into this character. For instance, we need to think of some kind of an animal companion to give her. She also has three favored enemy slots. And this is some type of a monster, or instead of one type of monster, we can choose two types of humanoids. Um, gnomes and elves, humans and dragonborn, uh, gnolls and orcs, uh, as those are humanoids. Uh, and she'll get some language bonuses right up here, so one, two, and three, that's what's indicative up there. And also, we need to... It doesn't sound like anything we've talked about. She's a counterfeiter. So she, uh, she's a forger of some kind as her con. Animal companion could be like an Arctic fox, says Dark Wolf. Something like that uh, is possible uh, as long as uh, the animal is able to survive outside of... Uh, I'm sure Arctic foxes like live in the climates they do for whatever reason. Some aren't able to dissipate the heat, but I don't know. We could be thematic about it. A giant owl is also good. And then it could be sort of like a snowy owl, like we can make a white or something along those lines. No cantrips. Those are the weapons for now. I mean, unless we, uh, I think we might need to give her a dagger, unless a short sword is also considered an offhand weapon. Let me double check. Short sword. It is, okay, here we go. It has the light property, which means the short sword can be used in an offhand. Uh, so as she has her two short swords, she can... She can tag with both. And because she does have uh, dual, dual weapon fighting, she's tagging you with that extra plus five. She also gets two attacks. Did you say she's kind of uh, Betrali or accident prone? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, oh, so what I meant by that fiendish was uh, her her con game was to lead caravans through the Arctic wilds for you know for whatever reason. It's a, there's a shortcut through a mountain pass. It's not mountainous, but it's it's wintry. Um, you know, through harsh weather and. Some of these caravans would have an accident. Um, oh, but uh, you, you meant that as like betrayal, like betrayal. -y. Yes, yes, yes. So early on, not necessarily as she is right now, as she's lawful neutral, but not too long ago in her past, she was betrayal e, betrayal. I, I don't know. I thought maybe you were uh, using like, a, another another word, that, like another language's word. And I'm like, yeah, I'll have to look that up. Uh, yeah, she is accident prone. She was, and she still may have or cause accidents, though that's not her primary intention right now, um, despite her her inklings in her background. She is a born gambler who can't resist taking a risk. She does fall in and out of love easily. Now that has led to this bond uh, that somewhere out there she has a child or children, um, that and she's trying to make the world a better place. So she wants to recover from 
her youth of accidents, uh, both uh, lethal and uh, childbearing. Um, she does... Uh, she does favor companionship over money, though she does like money. Uh, so this kind of gives you a scale of where things lie in her life. And as the player, it seems kind of chaotic because she's in at this snapshot moment in her character sheet. She's having some sort of personal crisis, some revelation. She's trying to reform herself and bring herself around. So by the end of the campaign that we're going to put her in, she might not be the same person that she started with. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Bubonic has a uh, ninja toe myself. Most don't realize it's a short sword and is another example of a slash piercing sword. And you know what? Uh, that's also an example because monks do get short sword proficiency. You can flavor a short sword mechanically as a ninja toe in cosmetic looks. Bobacus Arctic foxes can definitely handle life outside the Arctic, so uh, we can find a we can find an entry for something along those lines. Yeah, it doesn't have to be permafrost or Siberia or anything. Um, it, it's just in that zone where, you know, day and night cycles are going to be off. It is more cold than not, um, but Alaska does have a summer. You can go by and you can wear a t-shirt and shorts. Um, it doesn't have to be permafrost or anything. Yeah, and uh, and a swamp, uh, it's something that can operate in a swamp. So a giant mosquito, Bobicus. <laughs> so a sturge. <laughs> She could have lost the animal companion during whatever crisis forced her out of the Arctic. Oh, that's true. We could tell. A, uh, we could actually tell a tale through um, where she's been, and you know her search for for true companionship along the along the way. So she can actually have uh, kind of a tragic past, and there's nothing wrong with running a character with a tragic past. A constrictor snake is a, a one fourth CR, and then just remember, Bobacus, we we have when we find her, she is now proficient in a forest, in a forest uh, biome. However, remember if uh, if she's going through all this, there's swamp and forest, which is jungle down here, and a snake could operate here. There's also forest and uh, swamp, that's up here. And so, I mean, is this a thousand miles? Probably not. Is this a hundred miles? Maybe. Is the Arctic actually up north, or is this more the equator and we're south, and we're going to find more Arctic climates going downwards? This doesn't have to be tropical jungle. This is just a lush rain, uh, like very heavily rained in forest, or if you want to consider like the redwood forest, a, a jungle of sorts. There's mosses and ferns and all kinds of life. Yet they get snow, it gets cold, and if you keep going in that direction, you know, you, you head further north of Oregon and Washington, um, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get colder and colder as you go from a, a temperate to a subarctic to an arctic zone. Juneau, Alaska has an average temp of 32 in winter. Well, that's good to know. And not minus 32, right? <laughs> We'll have to think of those uh, all those Bob Ross paintings, right? Because those are all those Alaskan mountains and creeks and streams. Um, oh, also, what are the supplies she has that are going to carry out her con? Now, she may have started out like she was a charlatan before, but was she a forger? Like a forge? Like did she make forgeries? Maybe not. Maybe the forger came now in real time that we've generated the character. And in that case, uh, she's you know she said that she was this caravan leader. She has the experience and all these other seemingly official-looking paperwork. What are her con supplies? Do we just want to call it a forgery kit and be done with it, or do we want to give her something specific? Uh, and then of course her favorite enemies. We have three monster types, or a slot can be filled by two humanoid types. And then of course things like skin, eyes, hair. And we can we can try and find a, like something for a character appearance, and we can also look at her spells in a little bit too. But at least we have them slotted, and they're they're stand, they're outstanding right now. So. Okay, um, I'm in need of a break. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get something to drink. Uh, do a little stretch.
So, hey, Del Corn started watching. Oh, spit. <laughs> Shenanigans. Exactly, it's the same lat latitude, longitude as upstate Maine. Yeah. Um, so, this is what we're looking at. A couple things to think about. Go ahead and think about it over the break. Five or ten minutes. I'm going to go refresh myself. And we'll come back and start on character two. Uh, and then what we can do is in the third part of the stream, we'll just we'll do like a, a cleanup phase. And we can start finishing out the characters. Maybe we can see how the, how the characters themselves might be bonded or even not. Because uh, this whole campaign setting now we're working on has had parties of both. And we won't know until we see. So stay tuned. I will be back in just a little bit.